three red cards, 30 goals scored, and more championship midweek predictions? Yes, please. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. It's Monday, so it is my championship review for what went on in the championship weekend. We've made it to match day 18. We're starting to see the table formulate to what we are naturally going to see each club finishing this season. If you've got a correct score prediction, your comment will be on the screen right now. A lot of you did get a correct score. Well done for that. I managed to get one correct score, which was the Birmingham and Watford game. Could have had more. I was very close with it for a few. But shout out goes to Finley Easton with four correct scores in his first set of score predictions. I mean, that's a good start, my man. And this is what the Lexus Hall of Fame looks like. Now, I'm still third place. FIFA and Mr. Football very close behind me. Joshua Froude being caught up a little bit by Charlie Brown. So it's going to be an interesting competition. If you guys like what you see, if you want to see more championship content and more of me, please make sure you do give this video a like. It is tremendously appreciated. If we can hit 10 likes for this video, that'd be fantastic. If you haven't done, please subscribe to the channel. We really want to get to 350 subscribers ASAP. We're one subscriber away. Are you going to be the lucky one to get me to 350? And if you can, please share my channel to as many people as you can, to YouTubers, your friends, Friends. All of that would really make my day. But without any further ado, let's go through this weekend's games. So we'll start off with the South Wales Derby, which ended as a 2-0 victory to Swansea. Swansea actually had the best defensive record in the whole English league. They only conceded 10 goals in their first 18 games. And I believe it's their eighth clean sheet now in 18. I mean, bravo to Swansea, because they have really improved defensively. And I was a bit worried when they lost the likes of Joe Rodon, who was such a big character in this club. But defensively, they look like they've even improved improved without him. It's a bit like the Leicester situation when they got rid of Harry Maguire. But back to this game, they got the first goal very, very quickly. It was from a Jake Bidwell cross. Conor Roberts headed it. Then Jamalo with a tame shot. It went through the legs of Smithies. He'll be very disappointed with that. Cardiff, unfortunately, just couldn't really muster any clear-cut chances. And they were lucky they didn't even go further behind to Matt Grimes taking a short corner. He had a wicked shot, but Smithies made an outstanding save, managing to save it onto the post as well. It was a bit of a let-off for Cardiff, actually, they weren't further behind. Cardiff's quality came from with Kiefer Moore. He had a flick that just went over the bar. Also, Harry Wilson had a free kick from promising Harry Wilson territory, but unfortunately, he's missing the target. He's not really made his mark at the moment. But then Swansea ended the scoring with an unbelievable solo goal from Jamal Lowe. It was heavily aided with Joe Walls getting sent off, getting his second yellow card. Very silly with both yellow cards, in my opinion. Jamal Lowe literally ran through about six players from near the halfway line, actually. And he managed to score. That made it 2-0. His first goals since October the 24th. So Jamal Lowe's done really, really well to end his goal drought here. Swansea right now in a very strong position there in the top three places in the table. And if they get their clean sheet record like this, they can have a fantastic season as with Cardiff. It does end their four match winning streak. They need to recover ASAP. And very sore Bournemouth absolutely destroy Huddersfield Town by five goals to nil. Dominic Solanke got the first goal. A really, really nice goal, actually. Brilliant link-up play between him and David Brooks. Was there a foul in the build-up? I'm not too sure there was. I think a couple of people were complaining there was a foul, but I don't think there was. David Brooks really drove forward, teed it off to Solanke, who finished well past him, and that made it 1-0. Oh my gosh, their second goal though. Nabi Saar, he's really covered his head in shame. He's proven to be a defender that I don't think can play out from the back. He's gave the ball straight to Lerma, who then gave it to Solanke to score an easy second. That made it 2-0 to Bournemouth. Huddersfield did have a couple of chances. Bakuna had a fantastic shot, actually, which Begovic made a good save from. However, the scoreline got even worse when David Brooks managed to score. It was a very special goal on his part. A fantastic strike from just outside the box that made it 3-0 to Bournemouth just before halftime. And I couldn't really see Huddersfield game anywhere back into it. And in the second half, it was a lot more quiet. But then all of a sudden, Dominic Solanke channeled his inner Ronaldinho, dribbling from the halfway line. A bit similar to Jamal Lowe's goal, actually. Just literally taking on five players, rivering through them and scored. And that made it 4-0. And then Sam Sarge finished the scoring. It was from a good pass, actually. I think it was by Gosling, who managed to find Sarge. And that made it 5-0. Very poor result for Huddersfield to take. 
And they definitely try to outplay Bournemouth, but that is one thing you cannot do. With Bournemouth, they struggle more with teams that really do sit back and are difficult to break down. Bournemouth were organised from the start and got a very well-deserved win. And then to the one game I got right, Birmingham nil, Watford won. This was not a good game in the first half. I say Birmingham actually went closer to the lead in the first half, where Mikel San Jose managed to get a touch from a corner, which came off the post. He was very unlucky, Troy Deeney. I mean, he had three big chances in that second half. One, he tried to lob Lil Etheridge, where he was never going to get lobbed from there. Deeney had another chance where if he hit the target, it would have been an easy goal. But then he was third time lucky where Strike Perica ran forward, gaining the wrong side of Pedersen. Brilliant run, actually. Pedersen managed to do a poor challenge. It was a penalty. And this resulted in a red card as well, since he's already booked as well. So it was two yellow cards followed by a red. Troy Deeney stepped up. Bizarre penalty technique, I say, literally going down the middle and going high in the goal. But Everidge didn't manage to get there. Made it 1-0 to Watford. And I shouted Deeney in the top of my voice because it was the only score I was going to get right this weekend. In terms of this game, I think Birmingham will be a little bit gutted, actually, for the fact they couldn't hold on. But they'll be disappointed with the little opportunities they had. Watford, I dare say, did deserve to win. They need to kill games a little bit better, in my opinion. But there's no denying their quality. Watford are going to be a good side. And then we saw Norwich continue their fantastic run with a 2-1 victory. And Blackburn's record against the top half of the table still falters. And it was shown in this game. Puki managed to get the first goal. But Blackburn had so many chances that first half. Sam Gallagher had a fantastic header, but McGovern, who's stepping in for Tinkle, makes an outstanding save. And Sam Gallagher also, later on, manages to hit the post as well. I mean, Blackburn were unlucky not to get anything out of this game, in my opinion. Harvey Elliott earned Blackburn a much-deserved equaliser, a very special goal on his part. Once again, we've getting a load of these players thinking like they're Ronaldinho in this game, and that was another example of that. Doing fantastically well, rivering through the defence past Hanley, and that made it 1-1. One. And I thought Blackburn could have a chance, actually. But unfortunately for them, it was Norwich that got the lead. And Buendia and Puki. I mean, when those two are on it, Norwich are almost unplayable. And Buendia managed to pick up the ball. It was a bit of a poor clearance from Niambe to find Buendia. He had a shot. And then Puki literally being very intelligent, having enough of a touch to nudge the ball past Kaminsky. And that made it 2-1 to Norwich. And Norwich right now have formed a four-point gap from Swansea. If they can carry this good run of form, despite with all the injuries they've got, I think Norwich will be a very strong favourite. What's really good about Norwich is their squad depth. They've got so much quality in their depth as well. In terms of Blackburn, they need to improve their record against the top half of the table. They cannot try and establish their position from getting wins against poor sides. I to a game I'm briefly going to touch on. Derby nil, Stoke nil. A game with a little bit of controversy, actually. Derby, I will say, was the much better side. They had chances. Stoke barely tested any of the Derby defence and the goalkeeper, David Marshall, at all. And it was Derby who did have the chances. Colin Kazan reaches came the closest to scoring, where he had a goal line clearance cleared off by James Chester, although I felt he should have actually taken the shot one on one. I think he probably would have scored that. So poor decision making probably on his part. But Derby had so many chances. Curtis Davis had an opportunity. They're really strong to score goals. Only scoring eight goals this season is really shown in this game. But Stoke, they are without Tyrese Cable, which sounds like for the rest of the season now with a knee injury. That is going to be a huge blow because, of course, Stoke have started quite well and Tyrese Campbell was right in the centre of that. And the fact they've now lost him potentially for the full season, it's going to be difficult for Stoke to recover from. And it was just evident for how much they miss him for the lack of opportunities that Stoke had. They need to find a new way of playing without Tyrese Campbell and they can still get results. Then with Preston beating Middlesbrough by three goals to nil, they proceed to lose 3-0 to Luton. And that's exactly what Preston are. They're so inconsistent. And Luton were absolutely brilliant. Although I dare say Preston did start quite well, actually. And they've done this a lot of the time. They start games off really well, but they don't take their chances. But then Luton had James Collins, who turned into a man possessed. He scored a hat trick. Although two goals came from poor defensive errors. Paul Huntington with the first one, misjudging the long ball completely. Collins... Finishing it off easily, that made it 1-0. The second goal wasn't from a defensive mistake, it was just poor defending in general from a corner. James Collins managed to win the header, that made it 2-0 to Luton. And then for the third goal, once again, a long looping ball, but Story couldn't really quite clear it properly. He didn't get a good touch on it at all, it was collected. And then Collins, once again, 
finished it off and that made it 3-0 and following Luton being 3-0 up they could have even won it by more Preston were a little bit lucky to only lose by that margin what's the really big concern with Preston so far is their defence they conceded 28 goals in the league that is by far the most goals conceded out of all championship sides this season but it's not like they've always struggled defensively because out of their last six games they've had one clean sheet but in their five other games they've conceded 14 goals half of the goals they've conceded throughout the whole season so it's recently that Preston defensively at the back they're not showing their value it could be a blow for not having a full strength back line but it's no excuse and that is what they needed in terms of the transfer window. They needed defensive options. They needed attacking options. They needed to improve their depth. And that's exactly why Preston are falling short right now. Luton right now, they'll take this win happily. They were fantastic. Could have won it by more. Brilliant performance. To another side that won 3-0, that was Middlesbrough. Losing 3-0, they win 3-0. You know, you don't get this contrast anywhere apart from the championship. I said 3-1, so I was so close to getting this game right. I was a bit bold of me predicting Middlesbrough to score three goals, but alas, I was right about that. It was Duncan Watmore, actually, who scored two goals. The player didn't expect to score the brace, but he did. It was Johnson who managed to cross him from the first goal, who tapped it in, that made it one nil and then Tavernier scored a fantastic shot from just outside the box for their second and then Duncan Watmore once again with the third and they could have really won by more Paddy McNair had a great free kick which was saved by Bill Kowski Millwall did have a good spell in the second half when Matt Smith came a little bit close but apart from that Millwall were really poor. They really could have actually lost by more. Millwall were caught in the worst form in the league right now. Winless in their last 11 games. They need to pick up that form as soon as they can. They play Nottingham Forest in the weekend. And if both sides have a really bad result in midweek, that game looks very important for both sides. Middlesbrough right now, they look really strong at home. They need to implement that form away from them if they can. I actually think Middlesbrough can have a really strong season. And going back to Nottingham Forest, they lose 3-1 to Brentford. But I don't think the scoreline quite represents the game, if I'm going to be honest with you, especially with their second half performance. In the first half, yes, they did deserve to go behind. Jensen with a corner, Henrik Dalsgaard with a header. That made it 1-0 to Brentford. Although the second half, I dare say, it was the best I've seen Nottingham Forest play for quite a while. Sami Yobi had a chance, fought in a good save from Rea. Although, I have to say, Bree Samba also made some good save. He made a fantastic save from Mbumo, who could have really ended Nottingham Forest's chances of getting into it. When Knockhart came on, he was very, very instrumental in terms of creating chances. He looked very, very lively. But unfortunately, they did go two goals down. It was a fast break, a brilliant pass by Sergi Canos to find Josh De Silva on the right. He shot an absolute unstoppable strike that made it 2-0 to Brentford. And then for Brentford's third, it was a long looping ball. You probably could have argued Bree Samba could have challenged it more, but it was perfectly weighted. And Ivan Tony managed to get enough of a touch past Samba and that made it 3-0 to Brentford. And I do think Nottingham Forest did deserve something out of it. And I'm glad they managed to get a goal. It was from a free kick and Joe Robble scoring a header, a first goal from him actually in two years. And that made it 3-1 in the final result. They did go down to 10 men though, Nottingham Forest, with Anthony Knockhart getting sent off for two yellow cards. The second yellow card for diving. It's a real huge blow because Nottingham Forest have had a lot of red cards this season. And that and suspensions and injuries have really halted Nottingham Forest's um, progression in the league and right now they're still 21st in a very precarious position at this rate with the form that Derby's in they could be overtaken by their East Midlands rivals they've got to pick up points ASAP Brentford right now fantastic performance unbeaten in 12 games their clean sheet record ended which I think they will be a little bit disappointed by but Brentford right now showing similar characteristics to the Brentford of last year, which is a fantastic sign for them. And then to a very close game, which ended Queensborough Rangers nil, Reading 1. I think Queensborough Rangers deserve to win Percy with the chances they had. They had so many good chances, but they should have taken them. Elias Chair was absolutely fantastic in this game. I'm surprised he didn't manage to score a goal. First half, he forced a fantastic save by Cabral. Second half, he had a fantastic shot which came off the post. It was the closest that any side got to scoring in that game. Reading had a couple of moments, but it didn't really string anything too threatening. 
until Michael Elise came and he had a lot of quality. Brilliant link-up play actually just outside the box. And Elise took a punt from just outside the box and that was enough to score. That made it 1-0 to Reading. Chris Rogers will be absolutely gutted and Mark Warburton will be scratching his head thinking, how on earth have they not got any more points than they have got this season? They're really struggling, I feel, for goals. With Reading, a game they haven't played too particularly well in, in my opinion, but they still managed to get the three points and that's key. They're still in the race for the top six as well. If they can keep this momentum up, then I think Reading might have a chance to actually be there at the end of the season because they've definitely got the squad for it. And Rotherham end their free losing streak with a 2-0 victory over high-flying Bristol City. Now, I just cannot predict Bristol City for the life of me. When I think Bristol City may do something good, they then lose it. They've actually gone the run of a win-loss, win-loss. Streaky Bristol City is back. So, with this game, it was decided by two first-half goals. Matt quit scoring very early from a Dan Barlazer free kick, managing to get ahead of that, made it 1-0 to Rotherham. And then Smith got the second one. Once again, it was from a looping ball. And then he managed to get a shot. I think Bentley should have done a little bit better. But Rotherham would not mind that at all. That made it 2-0. And Rotherham could have literally won it by more. Bristol City, for me, did not do enough. Jeju did have a couple of chances that tested the goalkeeper Johansson in goal. But overall, Rotherham were the ones having the chances. They could have scored even more goals in that second half. But I guess the best team won in the end. Bristol City need to pick themselves up and try and recover. Normally, if they do lose, they win straight after. But they cannot go on a losing run now if they want to be considered a really, really competitive club this year. And we found Sheffield Wednesday still struggling at home with a 2-1 defeat with their Yorkshire rivals, Barnsley. For Sheffield Wednesday had a perfect start. They took a lead very, very quickly from Josh Windas. Barry Bannon with a fantastic long ball. And this is the sort of quality we've been missing from Barry Bannon this season. A very long looping ball, perfect weight and height and delivery. And Josh Windows managed to get the ball past Walton. That made it 1-0 to Sheffield Wednesday. Although they really allowed Barnsley to get back into this. It was from a corner. Whilst we've made a sort of parry, but he didn't really parry it well at all. Woodrow got a very easy header, unmarked. That made it 1-1. And then Dominic Frazier, who has been scrutinised a little bit with since coming into Barnsley. He's not really hit the ground running, I think a lot of people expected. But he managed to score brilliant link-up play, actually, with Chaplin. Managing to find him. That made it 2-1 to Barnsley. And Sheffield Wednesday were definitely the better side in the second half in terms of chances. They got a load of chances. Kadeem Harris on the right-hand side had a really good opportunity, but Jack Walton made a great save. Pelper Wesley made a fantastic strike, and it was something I almost choked my tea with, thinking, Pelper Wesley just did that? Wow. I mean, he nearly scored, but Jack Walton managed to push the ball into the post. But Sheffield Wednesday are starting to run out of games. They need to win games. Their performances, I dare say, I think are improving, but they need to stop conceding silly goals. Their first goal they conceded with Woodrow's goal. They definitely should have defended much better for that. Barnsley, they look really, really good, actually. I'm really excited to see where this Barnsley team goes under Valerian Ishmael because the potential this squad has, the young talent it has, such as Callum Britton and Callum Styles, they've got a load of potential. And finally, with a recently promoted sides going up against each other, it was Coventry that managed to get on top with a 2-1 away victory. This is now seven games unbeaten for Coventry now. Some fantastic form under them and Mark Robbins. They took the lead under Liam Kelly. He scored two first half goals. It was very disappointing for Wicker's perspective. They conceded the last minute in the first half. If it was 1-0, I actually think Wickham would have had a strong chance of getting something. But that second goal, I think, killed Wickham's chances a little bit. Second half, to be fair, they were much better. They won a penalty with Ben Sheaf managing to draw a foul. Joe Jacobson stepped up. That made it 2-1. So it was really, really close. And I think Akin Fenwer for Wickham did make a huge difference. He offered something very, very different for this Wickham side. But unfortunately, they just couldn't find enough chances to take the opportunity. And I think Coventry, in the end, fit were just about deserved winners, in my opinion. Wickham still in the bottom three. They are starting to lose a little bit of ground. They do have some really crunch games coming up. If they can win those, then maybe Wickham may have a chance. Only two wins all season. They need to make sure that if they can still score, they need to hold on to their lead. As with Coventry right now, they've given themselves some really nice breathing space from the bottom part of the table. They've now got to sustain that for quite a few months, I say, and then there'll be a stable championship side. They are a positive team to watch Coventry. So that is all the championship games on the left-hand side is the championship table. Norwich and Bournemouth, 
top two once again for the players. We've got Swansea, Watford, Reading and Brentford getting their playoff place back. Then we've got Bristol City, Stoke, Middlesbrough and Cardiff being the four sides just below that. Luton and Blackburn making up the top half of the table. Then we've got Barnsley, Huddersfield, Preston and Birmingham. Sort of a mediocre position right now. Then with the teams who are slightly struggling, Millwall, Coventry, Queen's Park Rangers, Rotherham and Nottingham Forest just above the relegation zone with the bottom three of Derby, Wickham and Sheffield Wednesday Rock Bottom. But that wraps up all the games covered in this video. So we'll go through the play of the weekend, result of the weekend and goal of the weekend just before we do the midweek score prediction. So result of the weekend, I've got to give it to Bournemouth 5, Huddersfield 0. An absolute battering of Huddersfield Town. Result of the weekend goes to Bournemouth. Player of the weekend is typical because there was a load of star quality performances today but I'm going to give it to James Collins with a hat trick against Preston he gets the play of the weekend goal of the weekend there were so many contenders a lot of screamers and a lot of solo goals I'm going to give my goal of the weekend to one of the solo goals and it's Jamal Lowe's one absolutely brilliant for the fact that it wasn't easy for the fact he had to evade two very dangerous tackles from Cardiff and still score my goal of the weekend goes to Jamal Lowe. So before we end the video, we've got midweek predictions now to predict for the championship. If you get a correct score on those, your comment will be included in the score predictions and you'll be getting a shout out. Let's start predicting. So we'll start over with Queen's Power Rangers and Stoke. I'm thinking nil-nil, but actually I've changed my mind and I'm going to say 1-1. One, one. But if this is nil-nil, I'm going to be livid. Bournemouth and Wickham. I think Bournemouth will be comfortable 3-0 for me. Barnsley Preston. Uh, this will be the sort of game Preston can win, but I'm going to say Barnsley for this one. 2 1 Barnsley. Bristol City Millwall. 1 uh, 1, I think, actually. Nottingham Forest and Sheffield Wednesday. Both sides really struggling right now, but I'm going to say 1 1. I think they'll cancel each other out. Watford and Brentford. I think this game will be a cracker. 2 2. Derby Swansea. Um, with a clean sheet record with both these sides having recently, I'm going to say 0 0 draw, actually. I think this might be a stalemate. Middlesbrough at Luton. I think Middlesbrough might just edge this one being at home. I'm going to say 2-1 Middlesbrough. Blackburn and Rotherham. I'm going to say 2-1 Blackburn. Cardiff and Birmingham. Uh, that's another one I think will end 0-0. I'm going to predict 0-0 for this one, actually. Coventry and Huddersfield. Um, hmm. I think Huddersfield could have a chance in this one. But Coventry with a strong run of form, I'm going to say 1-1. One, one. And finally, Reading Norwich. I think Norwich will continue their fantastic form. It doesn't matter what team they play. If they just find a way to win, I'm going to say 2-1 Norwich. But that wraps it up for today's video. If you guys like what you see, please make sure you do give this video a like. It's tremendously appreciated. As I said, 10 likes would be fantastically appreciated. If you haven't done, please subscribe to the channel. We want to get to 350 and 400 subscribers as soon as we can. All of that would really, really make my day. And to do that, please share my channel to your friends. Other content creators all that really made my day. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys, the legendary if you saw the end of this video. And as always, take care.